You know what? You know what? Let's turn this around. Gordon, you're the new host. You got Steve from Gamers Nexus here. Uh, so let me ask you, Gordon, do you think this is enough to convince everybody that Intel's back? Is Intel back? Steve. I feel like it's a trick question. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm joined by Gordon now. So, Gordon is a frequent uh, attendee for our videos. Fire, if I get enough miles, I get a free episode. That's actually, that is how it works. In fact, I was on a PC World's YouTube channel not long ago for the Intel New York event, and Gordon, you played the role of the internet. I am gonna play the internet again. We, of course, are at Intel's Architecture Day 2018. Big news for probably PC desktop people. Before that, this video is brought to you by MSI's Meg Z390 Ace motherboard, which primarily offers high frequency memory support for 4500 MHz kits and tight timings tuning, but also comes equipped with a 12 phase vCore VRM ready for the 9900K, a pre installed IO shield, and an infinity mirror for RGB LEDs atop the left heatsink. The RGB LED is synchronized with MSI's Mystic Light to support RGB and rainbow LED strips using the infinity mirror to cascade lighting. Learn more at the link in the description below. Let me just give you the uh, view Steve's video on this to find out all the details. And but, Gordon's article. Uh, and Gordon's article, wherever, <laughs> PCWorld.com. Sunny Cove, Next Generation Core, followed by Willow Cove. And then the last one that I'm sure people are gonna make fun of will be Golden Cove. That's right. Golden Cove, just too easy to make fun of that one. You know what that means. Can't say it, it's a family podcast. But I'm the internet, I'm playing the internet. This is not my opinion. I'm just saying. He's, he's, he's innocent here. I'm innocent, I'm just saying. The next generation Intel part, Intel is saying 10 nanometer, come out some point. It's it three worse. It's three worse than TSMC, Steve. It's three right. worse. It's three digits three worse. worse. Okay. It's seven better than 10. Eight, nine, 10. How do we? Your math checks out, Gordon. That checks, and that I'm going to say that. Uh, what else am I going to say? Oh, we've done this. We've done the solder thing. We've done that. We've done the so solder. So I think I think the biggest one that the internet will be commenting about now is you know, 10 nanometer. That's that's been on the on the books for a while. Is it is it too little, too late? Uh, of course, it's going to be three less. It's going to be three less. It it won't have as. Uh, it won't be cheap enough. We know that, right? right? It won't be cheap it enough. It can never be cheap it enough. It can never be cheap enough because no matter what, it has to be cheaper. And even if it's really cheap, it has to be cheaper than that. So it can't win that battle. And they probably won't be able to buy it anywhere on day one. And, but the good news is maybe we can get somebody to benchmark it in a way that we want to benchmark it. Right. You know, like a hire somebody to do it. <laughs> so let me ask you then, what, what do you think of the event overall? I mean, what's your actual opinion? And then, and then I'll proceed oh, you to mean my actual your opinion, actual not, opinion, and I, then and then I will proceed to poke holes in okay, it. Okay, I'm the actual internet. This is, hey, you know what? This is Intel, who let's admit it, they've been asleep at the throttle for a few years now. The lumbering giant looks like it's waking up finally, and there's a lot of goodness here, a lot of really future-looking stuff. I think there's a really good chance that Intel's going to get back into this game. Um, so yeah. Be ready for the day when they may actually have a good part and you may actually have to admit it's faster, it may be cheaper. I don't know what you can do about it, you know? But yeah, that's, it's a good, it's, a, it's finally the ship has turned a little bit. That's good news, right? For everybody. Right, for right. all consumers. What, about, what do you think about the, uh, the stacking approach? Oh yeah, so this, the stacking thing is cool because they're, you know, you can stack what, 10 nanometer and 20, 22 nanometer and stuff. That's really cool because they're gonna build chips out of very different things. So they can, certain things that not, might need to be on 22 nanometer or 14 nanometer can be that way. And then, so they can just sort of Lego the whole thing together. And if they can really hit their claims of getting the performance of what they're getting out of their monolithic cores, is good news. If on the internet, I would say, well then you're just, it's all glued together. It's not a one chip, right? That's well, or you would say, well, but you're copying, right? You're, but you're copying the other guys. Right. So I, I would definitely say yes. That would be that would be the internet argument. I'm right now. I'm going to go in and type. Well, there's somebody else did this already. You're just simply copying with chiplets. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll point out though that uh, it is. It does seem like a natural direction for silicon to go towards multiple pieces of silicon. It's just too expensive to do monolithic, it's getting too difficult, and uh, even NVIDIA has a big white paper out there on MCM, on multi-chip modules. So, I don't know. 
It definitely seems like the future, doesn't it? But I think the big difference will be, you know, can the, is when's this going to come out? I mean, seriously, ten, the problem with Intel right now, even though they've done this, they've shared more information than we've had Intel share in years, but if they can't deliver, people are very skeptical now of Intel's ability to deliver next generation silicon. And I mean, it looks good. Yeah, is there plenty of reason to be skeptical? Yeah, I, I'd be skeptical until you see it, right? But at the same time, the internet needs to be like, damn, they've actually delivered, and damn, they're hitting their power, thermals, performance, and price, then you gotta give it to them. You can't just kind of retreat back into your cubby hole and say, oh, well, you know. Moving target, how are you doing, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, let's, we gotta be fair to them. So I think it looks good, but I mean, I think if people are skeptical, it's fair. So, right, how about you, Steve? How about me? What, what is the question? What do I think? Do you think... You know what? You know what? Let's turn this around. Gordon, you're the new host. You got Steve from Gamers Nexus here. Uh, so let me ask you, Gordon, do you think this is enough to convince everybody that Intel is back? Is Intel back? Steve. I feel like it's a trick question. <laughs> I feel like it's a trick question, Steve. I think you're trying to, trying to corner me on this one. Is Intel back? I think... The, f the question I will ask you is, did Intel go anywhere? Sure, sure. They, they went somewhere because uh, they were price expensive, you couldn't get the parts, you know, all those kind of negatives. They couldn't have, they couldn't compete on a core count. Andy's going to beat them 7 nanometer. There's a lot of really negatives there. I, I don't know if this, uh, I'm going to buy this. If I'm the internet, I don't know. I might be skeptical. So first, first uh, internet or Steve, whoever you may be, I'll point out that uh, seven versus ten isn't quite so simple, right? It's not just a battle of which number is higher than the, or lower than the other, as you as you pointed out. There's a three difference. One is eight, nine, ten. That's that's a lot of ones in there. But does it matter? And I think that'll come down to things like density too, because it's not just about seven versus ten. It's about density and what else is going on in the in the architecture, right? But if the box says seven and the other box says 10, I want seven, right, Steve? I mean, Gordon. <laughs> I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough question, Gordon. I, I mean, Steve, I don't know. If it's it's kind of like if you see two frequencies, uh, you can buy a GPU with 2,000 megahertz or a GPU with 1,600 megahertz. Are those the only two specs that matter? Okay, what I want to know, Gordon, is if you think that this... Uh, Sunny Cove is going to compete with Ryzen second generation. We need to know right now. Second generation of Zen, as in uh, Ryzen 3000 right, or yes. whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, confusing names notwithstanding. Second I, generation third, Ryzen uh, 2? Yeah, oh, that, yeah the naming, naming could have used some work. It'll compete in naming for sure. It's hard to beat the, the confusing ness of the rise in naming. I will say that. Oh, I don't know. I think Intel's pretty good at confusing people with their code names. That's true. Sunny Cove, Golden Cove, Willow Cove. Willow Cove. Presumably they mean something to someone. I, I think to answer your question, uh, from what I'm seeing now, I'm going to go out and say, yes, it will compete, but I don't know specifically where. And I, I'm going to go out and say that the IGPs may potentially have the ability to start competing with the APUs. But we, what we don't know is what's the thermal envelope, what's the power envelope, how big does it have to be to fit that higher power IGP on there. But strictly based on performance, it looks pretty competitive with APUs. So here's another question though. So we know that I've read all the rumors, I've seen the numbers, second Ryzen, Ryzen 2, 3000 series, going to have a lot of cores, it's going to come out, they're going to announce it at CES is what the rumors say. If this Sunny Cove doesn't come out in 2019 on desktops, what do you do? Do you just... If it doesn't come out on 2019, I don't, in 2019, that's, that might be too little too late. I don't know. <laughs> that, that might be too little too... If it's 2020, I don't know. You start losing some of the steam, right? Some of the marketing hype. So I, I think it's I think it's gonna gonna happen 2019, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Okay, so it's got to happen 2019 for it to ha to be real, right? I mean, I think Otherwise right. That's fake. that's how products work. If it doesn't if it doesn't come out when I want it to come out, it's not a real product. 
Okay. So uh, do they have to compete on core count? Because of the crazy rumors that we saw from Adore TV, the specs, 16 cores and a um, small socket AMD, that's a lot of cores. For probably not that much money, does Intel have to compete on cores with them? I will say I didn't see, I didn't read those rumors or watch them, but I am lying. He's lying. We all saw those specs and rumors. Uh, I avoid, I avoid rumors. Uh, I am aware of them though. So, does Intel have to compete on core count? Well, I, I don't know. It, it could go either way. You could say Intel has to compete on core count with like the high-end Epic or a, a Threadripper CPUs. You could say that AMD has to compete on frequency. And in a lot of applications, frequency is really important. But then you look at something like Blender where AMD really for the price can wipe the floor with Intel with its threads. So do they have to compete? Uh, I, don't think, I don't think Intel has to compete. I think they can continue to exist without competing. But should they compete? Probably, it's just it's the price, right? <clears throat> so you don't, what you don't understand is it just only can be one winner for everything. It can't be a product suited for your needs. It's not about personal computing, it's about the best. We just need to know the best, Steve. What's your prediction right now? Uh, Sunny Cove or Ryzen 3000 series for 2019? That's a trap. It's, it's a trap. He won't answer. He will not answer. <laughs> it's, I will not answer. That is a huge trap. Uh, it's, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the answer that I hate getting from people from companies, which is to say it depends. Depends on your use case. Depends on uh, what you want. In I mean, if you want to overclock, I, I'll... Also, go ahead and predict that there's probably going to be more headroom there for Intel on overclocking, just based on the current market. So, yeah, AMD is stretching every bit of, out of their CPUs that they can, makes overclocking kind of boring if you're not doing anything exotic. So Intel might still hold the, the place there. And we did give Intel an award for the, uh, the most fun to overclock this year. But AMD, like Ryzen 7 2700, is extremely competitive in things like Hobbyist production if you're doing Blender, 3D animation, 3D rendering workloads. But, I mean, uh, but that could change. We could see a whole new world if we see Ryzen 7 3000 come out at CES and we do see Sunny Cove next year. Next year, like all bets are off. We don't know what we're going to see, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, next year is going to be, if everything happens to schedule that we understand presently, I think next year will be a, a major year for CPUs. Now you're looking at Intel's making some pretty massive moves that uh, deviate from its current des design a great deal, especially with going for things like stacking and uh, Favaros, whatever they called that approach. You know, it's it's um, it's a significant change. It should make it more exciting to look at. But uh, yeah, we don't we have no idea what that's going to be for performance. It could it could fall apart for all we know. It could be the best we've ever seen. So if I want to go on a forum and I want to post something really negative about Intel, how am I going to do that? You need to give me some advice. Well, how do I? We've already heard we've already heard Steve's advice. We want to hear your advice, Gordon. Gordon. Gordon's advice. What would Gordon's advice be? I think Gordon's advice first. First, he would get the hands going. Because you got to get the Gordon hands going, right? Get the Gordon hands going. So I think think I as as Gordon would say, but. But it's too late. But but AMD. But it's too late, Gordon. It's I mean Steve. It's too late. They missed the boat. No one cares anymore. I think that is what the the mean commenter would truly find fuel to post their mean comment. That is where they would find it. To be the first is all that matters. Is once you get to that. Clearly, I mean, look at the comments below this video. There's probably like five down there right now that say first. That's true. So if you posted first, congratulations. You won the internet. And uh, thank you for joining me, Steve. It was, it was, it was good. Oh, thank you, <laughs> uh, Gordon, for doing this interview opportunity with Gamers Nexus. <laughs> Why are you holding the mic? I should be holding the mic. But anyway, this is uh, channel Gamers Nexus. We'll be signing out now. Back to you, Dave. That's, that's not actually what I say.